Very nice. And there was a dragon fly right there. Where? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> see this beautiful weather? Oh, what's that? I said, see this beautiful weather? I take you to the nicest places. Always. I think, I really think God is trying to like fuck with me. All right, it's day two of our Naples trip and we are on the way back to the longevity clinic. I have DJ Baxter here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you like my music this morning? Oh yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I feel like I'm in a, I, I actually didn't, a festival. I actually, uh, yes. Did you bring the X dog? <laughs> uh, actually, I haven't minded the songs that have been on so far, which is surprising for me. Really? But um, reminds me of being in Australia in the gyms. I'm like, oh, babe, this dance club has weights. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play some for you. Wait a minute. <laughs> so we are on our way to get our results from our full body MRIs uh, as well blood as our work blood well? work. Yeah. So are you excited? Nervous? Like? I have no idea what the uh, outcome of this is going to be. I'm kind of scared that I'm going to have some kind of like brain tumor. I don't know. No, oh, babe, God, that's dark. <laughs> no, I honestly, sometimes I, I just, I feel off. <laughs> I think there's something significantly wrong with me. So I'm actually very nervous. So. Oh, I'm I hope, sorry. I hope I don't have like a, a, I don't know, something wrong, like a clot in my heart. I've been having a, a tachycardia uh, a lot lately. Um, like, I don't know. I feel like there's going to be something with my heart. Like I've got a vent. <laughs> the left ventricle's wrong. It's like back to front. <laughs> back to front. No, well, my my cousin actually um, has a disease, um, or I, I'm not sure what it is. Actually, it's a condition of some sort. But it, he basically has the ventricles are um, not kind of circulating the blood correctly through his body. So he had to have open heart surgery um, when he was about 18. So there's a lot wow. of heart problems. I think on my grandparents' side of like. Um, well, I think you're probably going to be fine, I'm but, um, even if you aren't, if there's like so that little tether of doubt, well, but this actually stops a lot of people from getting things like this done. Cause they don't want to know, which is, I find kind of weird. Um, like, yes, ignorance can be bliss, but like, you know, whatever is happening, like, let's say there is something wrong. It's not going to change. It's not like it wasn't wrong. And now it is wrong because you know. It's the only difference is the knowledge that you have, but at least if something's yeah. wrong, now you have an opportunity to to nip it in the bud early, right? So, like even with um, if you look at the cancer treatments now, well, most cancers are very treatable if they're caught early. You know, the problem early is uh, Carl was even talking about a patient that was in his 30s, healthy, you know, no symptoms of anything, and boom, they find a, a metastatic bladder cancer, um, and they they get it out. And, um, you know, Carl's like, they would not have found that until he started pissing blood. And by then it could have metastasized everywhere. Yeah. So, you know, that's, this is why this stuff is so important. In one you know, mile, it's very, turn right onto Creekside um, Boulevard East. You know, it's a very expensive process, but again, like, what is it worth? Like, think also, like, if you catch something early and you don't need tons of chemotherapy and time out of work and that sort of thing, like, um... You know, it, it can make a huge difference. You might think that you know five thousand, which is what this process costs, is a lot to pay, and it is. But what is worth saving your life potentially, or knowing potentially what you're predisposed for, for and then be able to take action to to prevent, prevent that later in life? You would save easily that amount of money on treatments and copays and that sort of thing. Yeah, and so, all those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now, I know you, if you were sick, the biggest thing you would complain about is the fact that you'd have to take time off work and go to appointments and stuff. I always sound like my dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Hi, Peter, how are you today? I'm great. <laughs> oh, so it's just a wallet then, is it? No, it's a lot. It's not the only thing that sticks out. You know what I'm saying? All right, so we're back here. This is Landmark Hospital in Naples. This is where the clinic is. It's big. Let's see how we go. Pretty sure Dr. Ducharme is waiting for us on the other side of those doors. Yes. Right. 
four minutes. Morning. Morning. How are you today? I'm really good. A little bit nervous, actually. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a little anxiety provoking mm. uh, to get your results back. We were just saying, actually, off camera, um, when we like, Carl's obviously had the testing done as well. When when you're in the MRI, um, you can see the 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 nurses and the um, I guess the, the technicians, technicians um, behind the glass, like looking and observing your scan as it's being done. And I can see like they're pointing at the screen and they're like calling others over and I'm like, what are they looking at? Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully... They're probably looking at your lean body mass is my guess was what they were. Mu well, muscle mass, lean body mass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's get to it and see what we yeah, got. let's get going. So um, I like to start with uh, going over labs first. Um, kind of the, probably the, the least exciting for everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. Actually, Holly, I have a copy of your labs in here, okay. and your MRI report will be behind Perfect. that as well, okay. if you want to follow along. Yep. Um, so your labs look pretty good. We'll just kind of breeze through your uh, CBC with differential, looking at white blood count, hemoglobin, red blood count, platelets yeah. were all normal. Okay. Um, next, uh, we went down, uh, we looked at your fasting blood sugar, yours yep. is normal at 83. We looked at renal function uh, with BUN and creatinine. Mm -hmm. I um, see the BUN. BUN is minimally elevated. That's most likely because of your lean body mass, okay. and you may have been a little dehydrated from fasting overnight. Okay. Yeah. Also, we tend to see higher protein diets with, with higher BUNs. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Nitrogen. Right. Like urea yeah. nitrogen. But also, I mean, urea is a non-toxic element, so high blood... FY is, uh, is it blood urea and nitrogen yeah. levels? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, I always want to make the differentiation. If you have kidney dysfunction, you will have high BUN. But just because you have high BUN does not mean you have kidney dysfunction. Right. It's only one of the markers for it. Right. So, yeah, we can, yeah. we If you were seeing a, a nephrologist or somebody about your kidneys, they would dig in a little bit more, look at your glomerular filtration rate mm -hmm. and your estimated creatinine clearance as well. Uh, so we looked at your electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, those are all normal. Mm -hmm. uh, we looked at your protein counts, total protein, albumin, mm -hmm. uh, those are normal. Those are nutritional markers, obviously. Yeah. And then liver enzymes and liver function, bilirubin, ALT, AST, totally normal. Mm -hmm. uh, cholesterol panel, total cholesterol, 184, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Triglycerides, normal at 53, that's wow, very that's really low. Yeah. <laughs> HDL, that's your good cholesterol. We basically want this uh, high. <laughs> very, very high. Yours is high at 96. Holy! So, that's one of the highest I've ever heard. That's very good. Um, yeah, well, okay, so we're looking for something about 39 and above. Um, so 96 is, is great. That's yeah. really good. Uh, bad cholesterol, LDL, should be less than 100. Yours is 77. Mm -hmm. So you're right on point. Okay. Uh, we looked at hemoglobin A1C. That is a marker of glycemic or blood sugar control, uh, averaged out over three months. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the lower, the better. Basically. So why is it averaged over three months, Carl? Um, it looks at the, uh, the lifespan of the uh, glycosylated sugar on the red blood cell and that the red blood cells about three months, they live about three months. Yeah, and that's actually considered like kind of the gold standard for long-term blood glucose control, correct? Yeah. So for example, if your hemoglobin A1C is 6.5% or higher, we would diagnose diabetes. Mm -hmm. So yours is 5.3%. Yeah, so right in the middle. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, we looked at thyroid, uh, TSH, yours is normal, uh, vitamin D, uh, you're in the normal range, normal is 30 to 100, yours is 50, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uric acid, normal, um, so uh, on the previous page, your TSH was in the normal range, mm -hmm. um, that's the most sensitive marker for thyroid dysfunction or function. Um, if we look at a couple of your other thyroid markers, uh, we looked at total T4 in this panel. Um, that is a little bit low. Um, you know, I think if if somebody were to have uh, low thyroid, uh, you know, they would feel fatigue, weight gain, um, sluggishness, um, you know, maybe brittle hair. Um, they would feel cold often, maybe depressed. I feel like you've actually just described a few symptoms right now. So, okay, so, so your your TSH, um, it while it is in the normal range for this panel, mm -hmm. um, 
at 3.1, most people actually live at 0 0.5 to 2.5. So you may have a touch of hypothyroidism. But that also makes sense. From she, ha she diets pretty frequently and is usually restricting calories. So you would somewhat expect yeah. to see that. So her total T4, uh, that is bound and unbound. Uh, That's the T4. thyroid precursor, right? Um, well, yes, before it converts to T3. Right. Um, so that is a little bit low. So you may benefit from having follow-up blood tests to look at free T4 and free T3 mm -hmm. to see if your active circulating hormones are I actually just, I, I was having those taken um, as part of the research study with USF for the reverse mm -hmm. diet. And um, interestingly, I'm, I would love to go back and just compare what they were to eight weeks ago because I was within normal weight. Within well, you're, normal still, weight. you're still normal. Eight, well, the, no, the, the total T4, T4 is, is a low. little low, actually. Is it? Oh, interesting. Yeah. I don't know if they looked at T4, though. I think they just looked at T3. No, they did both, T3 did and they? T4. Oh, they probably did free T3 and free T4. That's what most people do. Yeah. So he's looking at bound. And, yeah. yeah, and we're, yeah. we're going to be updating some of these lab panels, um, you know, uh, with the research protocol. All right, let's keep moving. Yeah. Uh, so uh, vitamin B12, yours is normal. Uh, it's greater than 2,000. You have plenty of B12 as your cofactor <laughs> for methylation. So. Um, not short there. <laughs> magnesium electrolyte, that's normal. Uh, ferritin is a marker of uh, iron metabolism and uh, inflammation in the body as well. That's normal at 74. And then C-reactive protein, that's an inflammatory marker. Yours is excellent at less than 0 0.3. Mm -hmm. So what that all would say is she is at very low risk for CVD, heart disease. Right. Like she's so, going to be extremely low risk. Yeah, those are some surrogate markers for uh, for heart disease, coronary yeah. heart disease. Because all the stuff that matters, blood lipids, blood sugar, um, yeah, and inflammatory inflammation, markers. she's about very low. Interesting yeah, so. because I, I was actually expecting to see perhaps my um, C-reactive protein to be a little bit higher just because I trained a lot. I probably was inflamed and, you know. <laughs> but keep in mind that... that there's um there's a big difference between a short term acute response of inflammation versus long term low level. So yeah. this is like if you look at exercise, I always tell people to this is why short term acute fluxes you don't want to pay too much attention to them because what actually happens is it's like a controlled dose of a stressor is what exercise is. If you looked at exercise by itself, it's increased heart rate, increased blood pressure. Uh, increased inflammation, increased free radicals. Mm -hmm. If you looked at it by itself, you would say, wow, this is terrible, you should never do this. But what it does is give your body, it's like a vaccine almost, it gives your body a controlled dose of a stressor and what happens, your body actually gets better at dealing with that stressor. Mm -hmm. So who do we see with high reactive oxygen species and high inflammation, people who don't exercise, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let's, um, let's go to your MRI. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a, you know, Probably a little more exciting than the labs. Uh, so let's look at your MRI of your brain. So the screen we are looking at, it is as if you are going to be looking to your left. So your face would be looking left, uh, towards the left side of the screen, and we're okay. going to start by doing thin slices at your left ear, moving to your right ear. Okay. So like this is what we're... Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. So basically what we're looking at is, this is her head. So yeah. Pointed this way. In this sagittal view plane. Yeah. So this is the outer marking of your left ear. Mm -hmm. That's freaky. Mm -hmm. My cute little ear. <laughs> yeah. The left side of your skull. Yeah. Uh, these are these cracks are just some fissures. These are normal uh, anatomic uh, lines. When our bones fuse when we're young. Yeah. Uh, Pretty the cool. Isn't left it? side yeah. of your brain, so uh, parietal temporal lobe coming in here. Oh, we always knew it was pretty small, right, babe? Oh, wait, there it goes. It's growing. <laughs> so again, we're scanning from left to right, little yeah. thin slices. This right here is called the dura. This is your uh, soft tissue bumper lining around your brain. Okay. Uh, so if you receive a, a, a hit to the skull, your brain. Uh, Hits Swells. the shock absorber. Yes. It hits the shock absorber. Okay. Yeah. So some of your cheek muscles down here, mm -hmm. neck musculature is, is dark. Muscles are darker in color. Bone is white. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for um, uh, uh, white would be blood or bone. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking for areas of hemorrhage such as uh, uh, you know bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be white on here. Uh, tumors would be darker in color and. Uh, probably a, a cylinder or circular shaped. Mm -hmm. uh, we did not see any any tumors, uh, no tumors, Yay. no masses, Yay. no strokes. 
okay? Right. Your brain is normal size, your brain is healthy. I don't believe it. So, um, the other thing we look at, and um, we did not see this in you, uh, but some of our clients that come through that either have uh, pre-metabolic disease or diabetes, high blood pressure or other risk factors like that or early signs of dementia might have little white hyper intense dots sprinkled throughout uh, their gray matter and okay. those are micro calcifications almost a, a precursor to uh, atherosclerotic disease okay so but we don't see any of those in you oh see i would i don't know maybe i'm just telling myself this i was honest i have a, a really difficult time with memory mm -hmm. um so that was something that i would be really interested in as well as looking at our genetic panel but um yeah alzheimer's parkinson's all of those kind of memory or um psychological like changes that can happen. I wondered about that because I have a really difficult time with memory, so yeah. Yeah, everything we see anatomically through these scans uh, look normal okay. for, for your brain here. So um, if we look up here, we got 12,358 slices wow. throughout your body. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot of slices. That's a lot of data. <laughs> so we'll keep moving over. This is the up, this is your left eye, Yeah. okay? This is your left maxillary sinus. It's nice and wide open. Black is air. It should be wide open. Mm -hmm. uh, the cerebellum is here. Mm -hmm. So again, this is all normal looking. And you said something I see some the day teeth about, too. About, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You said something about the size of your amygdala. You can oh, the hippocampus. And the hippocampus. We will get to that part. Okay, yeah, cool. we have special uh, uh, proprietary uh, sequencing we do through the brain to your scan look excellent. So sweet. We'll kind of truck through here, and then your right maxillary sign is wide open again. Yeah. So this is going to the That's other the side, side of her of her yeah. of her brain. So we're moving towards the right. That's ear. why it's getting smaller. Yeah. Mm. yeah the, yeah, we cross center line. Mm -hmm. And you're back to an embryo. <laughs> yeah. So let's look at a couple really cool. other. Um, so this is an MRA. So this is an angiogram using the MRI technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are your arteries uh, in your neck, your carotid arteries that go up in your brain. So um, your neck and the back of your head is down here. Your yeah. teeth are up here. And we're going to do thin slices from your chin all the way up to the top of your head. Mm -hmm. So we see the internal carotid artery, the external carotid artery, mm -hmm. and your vertebral arteries back here mm -hmm. in the back of your neck. The vertebrals, as we scan up, are going to come together to become your basilar artery. Okay. And then all of these arteries are going to form a circular network called the Circle of Willis. So if one of these arteries abstains, uh, abstains a, um, a a large uh, insult, uh, you know, a, a stroke or a blockage, yeah. uh, the other blood vessels would supply blood flow to your brain. Okay. Looks like a puppy dog. Yeah. So we're going up uh, cerebellum here. Okay. Uh, sinuses here. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to see uh, your septum here. So these are ears. Yep. Back of the head, front, this yep. is the nose. Yep. And this is your septum here, nice and straight, no deviated septum here. Okay. <laughs> God, that's so cool, the level of detail they can get I to this. Incredible. So your vertebral arteries are coming together to form yep. your basilar artery. Yep. And going up. So what is the... Going inside your brain here. Okay. Yeah. My neck, my back. Here's the circle of Willis. My brain and my sack. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry. So, this is again looking at all the vasculature of your brain. Yeah. All these little arterioles. So, if there was, for example, if somebody had had a hemorrhage or they were going to have a stroke, and you, like, what would a blood so clot we look could, like here? We could see an aneurysm. Uh, let me flip to another view on the screen. Okay. Actually, uh, let me check. We have a lot of slices on a lot of data. So this is another view of your oh, wow. arteries in your brain. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. That's this so is awesome. as if that's you are you are looking at us. You're yeah. facing us. So you're looking in the mirror right now. Yeah. So these 
are your carotid arteries going wow. up your neck into your brain, your right carotid, yeah. and your left. So if we saw an aneurysm, there would be a ballooning right here. Okay. So. That's um, crazy. So it? yeah, again, there would there would be like a balloon shape. Like a bubble. A okay. bubble, right? right? And these are your vertebral mm. arteries, your right vertebral, mm. your left vertebral, and they come together to form your basilar artery. And we can spin this around 3D to look for any <laughs> narrow, narrowing. Narrowing would be stenosis or plaque buildup. Okay. So, and you can see posterior circulation, middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery in, into the brain. So. Your brain getting plenty of blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. All right. Let's switch gears. Mm -hmm. We're going to look down in the pelvis. So for females, we look specifically at the uh, female reproductive organs, uh, the ovaries. We look at the uterus. Um, we're looking for abnormal masses, nodules, tumors, again, uh, fluid that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your left hip. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the front of your body and you're yep. standing. Uh, so this is your backside, your yep. butt, My butt, your glutes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty weak, right? So, <laughs> so this gonna, is going from, from left, left to right. To right. Okay. And again, you're facing, yeah, I can see facing the left side. Yeah. Uh, these are intestines here. Mm -hmm. Um, what we're going to see is the bladder is going to come up and be bright white because there's liquid in it. Yep. So bright white bladder. Mm -hmm. And the, you can start to see the vertebral, lumbar see. vertebral bodies. And the, Got a little bit of narrowing on this disc right here, but no, no so extrusion. The radiologist was kind enough to measure the size of the uterus for us. Mm -hmm. uh, it's normal, normal size. Um, we can look and we can see none of these discs are pressing into the lumbar spine as well. Yeah. Now she's, it looks like she's got a little bit of narrowing, right? But that's very normal as people this age, is, right? Yeah. This, so this is normal. He called, he called this normal, your, your spinal alignment, your vertebral bodies. Hey, all those people who give you crap for your deadlifts. Well, yeah, yeah no, I, I understand there's no like risk of injury because I don't have any herniations, but it's funny to look so at the shape of do, my spine. So you do Ooh. have quite the, we call oh, this a lordotic yeah, curve. Yeah, very lordotic. So you have a very pronounced lordotic curve. Mm -hmm. So lordosis okay. would be disease. Mm -hmm. Lordotic is just the, the natural shape, yeah. shape right? Uh -huh. So. Um, yeah, it's like your spine makes a right hand turn when it gets to your butt. Yeah. It really does. So uh, your ovaries were normal in size. Um, Everything looked normal in your pelvis, so awesome. high fives all around. Okay, that's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's a normal variant. Some okay. females um, they have an anterior uh, version of their uterus. Yours is retro, so so what like so it's just pointing back instead of pointing more forward. Okay, that's a normal variant. So it's not a disease. Doesn't give you any risk or any oh, okay. or anything. So you look like you're very relieved. Yeah. Uh, by all this. So you, you actually have a history of uh, like cancer, ovarian, cervical, and breast cancer that runs in your family, right? Yes. So it's really, really good to see that there is uh, nothing abnormal <laughs> for it's now, funny. which is good. <laughs> yeah. Very relieved. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's shift gears. <sighs> okay. Okay. We use a special program uh, to look at liver fat and liver iron. Mm -hmm. um, this program is designed to pick up high liver fat or high iron content. Mm -hmm. Most people we can quantify, we can give you a number. Yours was very low. Your liver fat was very low, mm -hmm. so actually our program couldn't pick it up. Oh wow. So okay. yours is very low, your liver fat's uh, normal. Normal is less than 4%. You're okay. normal. So Carl, we're looking at the liver from the top down, right? Yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, no, it's okay. So, so this, is the spi this is the spinal column right here, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Spinal, spinal cord, vertebrae, back, arms. Um, this is the uh, abdominal wall here, and this is the liver, which the uh, program outlined for us. Your so liver we, lean as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it looked good. Okay. Um, and, and normally, uh, Lane, when we get to yours, uh, mm -hmm. we actually have specific numbers. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit at, higher so. body fat, so. It'll be, it'll have, it'll well, we'll fine. see, we'll see. Yeah. It's yeah. interesting how each of us stores, uh, mm -hmm. you know, subcutaneous versus visceral fat. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, I'd imagine I'm more subcutaneous, but we'll see. So, okay, we will move. Now this is a coronal section. So this, 
Uh, these, um, we just did um, a, some thicker slices, so it's as if you are standing facing us. Yep, okay. Um, so we're going yeah, to start to... I'm looking at you right now. So yeah. that's the abdominal wall yeah, right there? Yeah, yeah, the musculature. Yeah, so um, we're going to see the, the ribs here, the okay. liver start to come in. These are thicker slices here. Yeah. Uh, some transverse colon, mm -hmm. large intestine, mm -hmm. the heart. Mm -hmm. um, Boobs. This is uh, <laughs> breast tissue. Um, breast tissue. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stomach Hi, level. Dr. Carl. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is gallbladder. That's okay. Oh, that's cool. Normal. Yeah. So, um, this this view um, we can see the uh, the spinal column here too. It's a, it's a good view. Uh, right kidney, um, spleen, left kidney is a little bit higher. Uh -huh. um, we can see your spine nice and straight. Good good discs in between there. Nice. So, yeah. Mm. So that's, that's just another uh, another viewpoint. Yeah. Like I said, we have so many images we could potentially go through here. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's go back to your brain. Uh, so we do special um, imaging to look at your hippocampus to look at dementia risk. So okay. uh, I'm gonna zoom in here. Let's see. Like you're right in the way. Yep. Yeah. We're we're okay. Um, your hippocampus size. Mm -hmm is uh, so the gray part is where uh, you should be for your age so age 30 yeah uh, you should fall within this percentile okay uh, for this is the volume that your hippocampus occupies okay and then um, we we look at that specific area mm -hmm. um, and we develop what we call a hippocampal occupancy score and this directly uh, correlates to uh, dementia actually okay so you are in the 60th percentile for your occupancy score, so you're completely normal, okay? okay. Uh, and the thing that matters is that you're in the normal range. It's not the high end or the low end of normal, it's right. normal is normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then for hippocampal volume, you're actually, uh, I believe that's 90 92nd percentile. Yeah, I, I, I have the light version of the software, so I can't totally zoom. Yeah. Um, but yes, so you are stone cold normal. Okay. Um, but what's really cool is we can take this and this software will highlight different areas of the brain with different color sequences. So uh, we are looking at your face in the mirror. Yep, okay. So we're starting to see the uh, nasal cavity. Nose. The eyes are going to come in here. This is the, the frontal bone. You look like an alien. Lips. <laughs> yeah. This is probably the uh, coolest view you can see of That is cool. So oh, cool. The frontal lobe. The, you know, the left, the right. Mm -hmm. So um, the hippocampus is going to come up in red. Yeah, towards the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. So it's down here. Mm -hmm. All right, hypothalamus here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really neat. This is how they calculate it. The cerebellum is going to start uh, coming in the back in light blue. Mm -hmm. So this is just another way to look uh, at the brain. And there's no dye here. It's just... No, this is all post-processing on these images with wow. special software. Um, and then we can look from a, uh, a top-down view. So this is the top of your skull mm -hmm. moving down towards your neck mm -hmm. as if you're laying yep. with your back here and, and your front side here. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. It looks like an anatomy book. Yeah. So. Yeah. So cerebrospinal fluid in the uh, in the ventricles here. Mm -hmm. And then again. Yeah. Hippocampus here. Mm -hmm. So. And those are eyes at the front there. Yeah. It's cool. So you can literally yeah. see it slicing down, slice yeah. by slice. Yeah, so we have so many slices, so many images. So, mm -hmm. um, That's crazy the amount of data you guys get. All right, one final image here. And this is another, uh, shoot, where is it? Another special set of uh, post-processing we do. This actually, this is called diffusion weighted imaging. Mm -hmm. Um, so this looks at uh, restricted water diffusion within the cell. So um, 
uh, certain cells are going to light up on here and they will be a, a bright yellow or a white in color. Mm -hmm. um, the, the kidneys usually, the spleen, uh, the spinal cord itself, okay. um, certain areas of the brain. Um, but what will also light up on here are tumors. Tumors okay. or um, hyperactive nodules that could potentially be cancerous. So right. um, lymph nodes uh, that are dangerous yeah. and things like that. So okay. we use the, this special sequence to look for those. What would tumors look like? They would be a, a bright white yellow. Okay. Um, your skin Big money is clean, wedding. so we don't have any of those to point out. Yay! <laughs> so again, this is the top of your head, and we're going to be uh, coming down. So your face would be here, and yeah, the back, back of, your of my head. head at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. Again, we. Yep. Yeah. So this is all normal. All of these images of diffusion were normal for you. Mm -hmm. So the spinal cord, mm -hmm. some of these blood vessels light up too. Mm -hmm. Crowded arteries. Mm -hmm. So we'll Maybe just kind of go into down. The neck. Yeah. yeah, so into the neck. Um, so if you had a, a thyroid mass and it was potentially cancerous, it would be bright white, bright yellow like the spinal cord here. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that in some of our clients actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so this is the top of the lungs. Again, if you had a, a lung mass or, or lung uh, uh, lymph nodes that lit up that were potentially dangerous, mm -hmm. uh, we could see those. We do not see those in you. Mm -hmm. So all those things lit up there are just blood vessels? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is normal uh, liver, heart, left ventricle, right ventricle. So you're, you're an athlete, you've got uh, a muscular wall around, you know, a nice mm -hmm. muscle wall around your left ventricle. Mm -hmm. This is your aorta here coming down. Your spleen is down here. Mm -hmm. Liver again. What's the brightness on the right side there? The spleen. Oh, is that what that's Yeah, okay. part of the spleen. Left kidney. The right kidney. So another thing we can point out in this viewpoint, so you have very minimal body fat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, uh, you know, 60% of Americans would have uh, one to three inches of white around the, edge. Around, around the perimeter of their body here and, and we would see that body fat. Yeah. So when we go through your full results with your genomic report, your pharmacogenomics, and we integrate all the MRI data in your blood work, uh, we will actually pull up special images for body composition. Oh, that's awesome. We'll look at subcutaneous yeah. uh, fat and more importantly visceral fat, or yeah. organ fat mm -hmm. and those will be color coded with our special processing. Okay. So it's going to be really neat to see. Exciting, I can't wait to see that. So, um, normal, normal, normal. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Legs. Yeah, legs. <laughs> That's funny. Leg, legs, legs. So. Well, you got to be pretty happy with this then. Yeah. Does it, do you feel like uh, like relieved or confident? Oh, of course, or? of course. I was just very worried. I yeah. was interested in um, knowing more about my heart because I said earlier I'd been having some like tachycardia, like my heart rate had been elevated mm. for a little bit. Um, but that seemed to have kind of stopped over the last few weeks. I think it was around the time of the Super Bowl. Um, actually, we were visiting Carl yeah. and I, his wife Carly, and yeah, your heart rate was like one ten. My heart rate was going really crazy for a bit. So, yeah. But that is normal, right, Carl, to have like bouts of tachycardia kind of randomly and unexplained. Well, normal normal variants would be uh, PVCs or premature ventricular contractions. Mm -hmm. uh, um, most people do get those. Um, they might not necessarily get runs of tachycardia, mm -hmm. so I, I don't have an explanation for that. Mm -hmm. So maybe having some type of uh, wireless monitoring mm -hmm. or Holter mm -hmm. monitor device might be beneficial. Yeah. We know you're not hyperthyroid, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so we so, can explain some So we can cross thyroid. that off the list. Yeah, um, okay. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for explaining all that. Yeah. yeah. My, My turn? Lane. Yeah. We're just about to do, I'll uh, go through Lane's um, MRI scan and blood panels. So yeah, let's, let's start let's with the blood work first. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say, I, I bet my total cholesterol is a little bit high. I think my LDL will probably be on the upper side because it always, almost always has been. And I think my, I think my inflammation is low and I think my blood sugars will be pretty normal. And my HbA will be pretty normal. So we'll see. Let's see how I did. All right, here's your labs, and we'll we'll go through uh, again. Uh, 
CBC, Whoa. white blood count, hemoglobin, platelets, normal. Um, fasting blood sugar. Was a little high. Yours was a little high. It's weird. What I was don't, this? What was, it was your 108. 108. And the normal range? Normal is less than 100. Yeah, less than 100. Okay. So, again, it's tough to put a lot of stuff. How long was the fasting single, supposed to be? Uh, 10 hours. Mine was like nine and a half. So let's flip to the next page. But still, that shouldn't affect that. Fasting should affect Or, been. sorry, two pages. We'll just jump two pages ahead. Because you've so, got your HbA1c. Yeah, hemoglobin A1c, go one more page. It'll be at the top. Hemoglobin A1c. It's actually lower than yours was. 5.2%. So excellent glycemic mm -hmm. control over the past three months. Yeah. Okay. I will stay on this page since we're yeah, here. I see vitamin D is low. Vitamin D is 24.7. Normal is 30 or higher. So I need hey, something with vitamin D. You gotta get out in the sun. You're the looking sun. like a vampire lately. <laughs> Too yeah, much work. So, uh, yeah, sun or you know uh, maybe a, a dose of 5,000 units of vitamin D daily. Wow. Okay. So. Or a tanning bit. Yeah. Uh, TSH. Or <laughs> TSH normal range 3.89. Um, you know, uh, vitamin B12 normal, 1,004. Magnesium normal, 2.0. Yeah. Ferritin normal, 202. C-reactor protein, that's our inflammatory marker, normal, 0. 0.7. So that's actually, so I think interesting to know. Mm -hmm. um, for those that don't know, I have moved up a weight class in powerlifting. So before, mm -hmm. I was in the 205-pound class, and now mm -hmm. I'm 231. So I fully expected some of these markers to go up because like, for example, CRP, I'm still normal, mm -hmm. but like my, my CRP when I was 205 was almost lower than detection limits. Mm -hmm. It was very low. Um, and so now it's still low, mm -hmm. but it's actually gone up a little yeah. bit, which you actually expect to see. Like, I want to be very clear. I expected mm -hmm. some of these numbers to go up. So I expected my blood glucose to be higher. Some of my blood lipids, I could see LDL, we haven't gotten there yet, but LDL is a little bit high. Mm -hmm. um, those have always run a little bit higher for me, mm -hmm. but one of the things to keep in mind is regardless of the diet you use, if you gain weight and gain body fat, those numbers will go up. Mm -hmm. That's just, it's almost like a linear increase. So, um, and my, actually, even going back to when I was a teenager, I had blood lipids done, and I've always run on the higher side cholesterol. Yeah. So, so we'll see what your genetics show. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll see. Uh, let's go back to the first page. Um, we'll look at uh, kidney function, uh, blood urea, nitrogen, uh, 23 again, you know high protein diet lots of muscle mass. That's normal for you actually What's this EOS? Uh, those that's just an eosinophil um, So that's it could be an allergy marker mm, um, interesting. Yours is yeah borderline high um, One more thing on the blood glucose as well. Mm -hmm. So my glucose was higher than Holly's what was Holly's uh, fasting? I forget what it was 80 Something. So she had very low fasting blood glucose, but my HbA1c is actually a little bit lower than hers. My yeah. HbA1c, well, it was by 0 0.1, but, and the reason, so there's, a, there's a lot of things that could um, explain the higher fasting blood glucose. Like even if I was stressed that morning, yeah. I, I don't recall, but if Stress you're stressed, <laughs> cortisol goes up, cortisol actually raises blood sugar. So mm -hmm. it's very possible that maybe I was just a little bit more stressed out that morning. We had less sleep the night before, you know, there's... I think one of the things you always got to keep in mind is the blood work, a lot of it's just a snapshot, right? Yeah, it's best if you can trend it over time. Yeah. 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 So, so if I consistently was high blood glucose, we had several of these measured, then it would probably be something to be worried about. But because HbA1c is, yeah. high, or is low... Your A1c is so tightly controlled that I'm, I'm not worried of, about a one-time elevated fasting blood sugar. Yeah. Um, I'm sure all the clean eaters will tell me I just need to go on carnivore. Mm. Electrolytes, sodium, potassium, chloride, normal. Um, we'll look at protein counts, total protein, normal. Albumin, normal. Uh, liver function, total bilirubin, normal. Alkaline phosphatase, normal. AST and ALT, uh, I'm, you know, all intents and purposes, those are normal. Um, we're really looking at these two liver enzymes. If they're greater than three times normal, that's, that's when mm. we start to look at them. So... You know, 41, it says it's high, but the normal range is 0 to 40. Yeah. So that's... that's they have to pick a cough somewhere. Yeah. Uh, total cholesterol, your total is normal at 182. See, that actually surprises me. Usually I run over 200. Mm. So it's interesting to me that that's, that's lower than 200. That's good. Yeah. 
Triglycerides is another marker of sugar control. 71, that's excellent. Mm. That's normal. Uh, HDL, your good cholesterol, is 55. So again, we want that higher than 40. Um, LDL, uh, that's your bad cholesterol. Uh, yours is 113. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, technically we want it less than 100. Mm -hmm. Mine is 113 also. Right. I have, you know, uh, I actually have some genetics for high cholesterol yep. and, uh, you know, long family history of high cholesterol too. So. Yeah. Uh, but also my VLDL is pretty low, which right. is also, that's another bad cholesterol. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, I think you you would say, I mean, would this be something you'd be really worried about based on the context of the other markers? I don't think so. I think if we follow it over time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we're going to look at your visceral fat. Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at your coronary CT. We're going to look at all those other things, look at your genetics, and we'll, you know, That'll pay the we'll see where your overall risk is. Interesting. So, uh, we also, for men, we look at uh, PSA. That's a prost prostate-specific uh, antigen. Uh, that uh, looks, it will rise with prostate size. So um, yours is normal. Again, it's a one-time snapshot. Yep. If, uh, you know, for men over 50, you know, there's some controversy. Should we be following it yearly? Should we not be? There's different recommendations from a couple different organizations, um, but we get a baseline for you here. Um, and that is your blood panel. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, let's go to your MRI. Thyroid, I'm just looking here real quick. Oh, your total T4. Yeah, very normal. Was normal, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so your TSH was, if we look at a tighter window, 0 0.5 to 2.5 years, was a little outside of that at 3.89. So it was a little bit high TSH? Yeah, which um, if you were symptomatic, you know. Would indicate low thyroid. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right, negative feedback, so. Yeah, I've actually always run a little bit high TSH, interestingly. So but I'm not having any. The left side of your skull. So left, left ear. Look at that big old brain right there. <laughs> Neck musculature. Uh, this, this is your dura. Mm -hmm. Again. Uh, parietal lobe, uh, temporal lobe. Frontal lobe is up here, occipital lobe. That big old knee just fall. Yeah, so um, your brain, uh, your brain scan was completely normal. Okay. Hey -o. No strokes, no tumors, no blood, no uh, hyper intense white lesions or micro calcifications. Um, uh, we looked, uh, uh, we looked at your cerebellum. Cerebellum looked good down here. Again, this is normal, healthy brain tissue. It's normal size for your age, here's your left ear, or sorry, your left eye. I, was <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's out of place. <laughs> I, was just, I was just quizzing Carl, you. Carl, we have a problem. <laughs> I'm kidding. I need some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually the only abnormal finding we did see is uh, look at your left maxillary sinus. Oh, There's a, a rim of inflammation around it. So uh, you have sinusitis. Uh, Whether it's me. allergic or you know, uh, you know, environmental or if you that explains why cold. Lane snores all the time and he doesn't Possibly. sleep very well. We have a reason for it. I sleep okay. Yay. Yeah, you sleep okay. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone around you does not sleep so if okay. You guys, if you guys remember Holly's, this was a big black. Yeah, air, that was completely black away. on me. Right? So this is uh, inflamed. Hmm. So. Hmm. I started using Flonase and I feel like it's been getting a little bit better. So, Carl, yeah. obviously this is something that you could action. Like, what would you do to... So, I, th you know, I think... Like um, an ear, nose and throat specialist or you something? You could, like you could. And they would start with taking a detailed history. Um, you know, uh, they would ask about recent coughs or colds, uh, environmental or seasonal allergies. Mm. Um, you know, if you want to go down the rabbit hole, food allergy testing even. Um, but I think, you know, looking at your blood markers, you know, that would probably be pretty low yield. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it might just be allergic sinusitis. Mm -hmm. So Flonase may benefit you. Yeah. Or I've, even I've like started... a, a nutty pot to do rinsing and saline flushes, so. Yeah, I, I've started the Flonase. Like, I was getting too reliant on phenylephrine. Mm -hmm. um, I was having that like every night. Yeah. And it works. I mean, but I started to notice it was working less and less. 
So I moved to the Flonays, and that seems to be, I've, I've really got to cut down the phenylephrine from mm -hmm. doing that. So I'm hoping that that's going to help it up a lot. Mm -hmm. So Interesting to see like actual scientific validation for uh, symptoms, you right, know what I mean? Right. Um, so this is about the midpoint right here, uh, the middle of your head. Mm -hmm. So we see your spinal cord, your uh, your cervical vertebral bodies, your cervical discs here. Yeah, I should probably have some disc herniations as we go lower. You're not going to see them there, though. I don't. They think. did so. We didn't do a dedicated uh, cervical MRI mm -hmm. to look for those specifically, uh, but we did. Uh, our radiologist did not call any bulging or herniated discs um, in in our segmentation here. Well, interestingly, now we're not, we're finding that even people. It used to be thought that if you had a disc herniation, that was it. It was herniated forever. And now we know that like a lot of discs spontaneously resorb and mm -hmm. like basically they rectify themselves uh, over time. Like um, Dr. Stu McGill was talking about this with me. He's like, if you look at 70 year olds don't have bulging discs. He's like, they have other problems. He's like, but you very rarely find a disc bulge in somebody who's elderly mm -hmm. because it, it, they just resolve themselves over time. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. The other, the other uh, caveat with MRI imaging specifically of the spine is um, a, a normal variant actually may be to find a bulging disc. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean it's symptomatic right. or yeah, actionable, exactly. though. Yeah, because so. yeah, the only time you're going to know this stuff, if you have a disc bul bulging or herniated disc, is if it's hitting the spinal cord, right? Because that's when you're going to have uh, symptoms. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to be asymptomatic. Yeah, so it can be a common finding, um, mm -hmm. you know, on MRI of the cervical or lumbar spine. So we're kind of cruising through. We're going towards your right ear. Um, healthy brain tissue again. Um, here's your right maxillary sinus again. Oh, look at that inflammation. Yeah, so even more over wow. here. Wow. So, so that is meant to be completely black? Yeah, and this should be totally black and air -filled. I have a feeling like somebody's going to be harping oh. on me about going to the ENT when I get back to Tampa. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I would like to get some so, sleep. At least we got my ass sorted out, babe. So that's, that's, all, we saw. that's all we saw. That's all we saw on your MRI, uh, the cool. only abnormal finding. We'll look at your blood vessels. Um, again, this uh, we're going to be looking at your carotid arteries here, and then your vertebral arteries are going to come up back here. Uh, this is your uh, lower uh, jawline jaw. teeth, and we're going to move up your neck towards the top of your skull. Okay, so we see the vertebral, right vertebral, left vertebral. Mm -hmm. Uh, right internal, left internal, external. Uh, external, which go to supply the face. That's some trippy ass shit. Yeah. So these are going to come up together and fuse to form the basilar artery. So again, look at, we can see your left maxillary sinus. Right? You can see that rim of yeah. inflammation around it. And even the right one, look at it. It's closed. completely enclosed. Yeah. So what about your look, septum? Can you see that on the uh, septum looks, it's a little curved. Uh, most of us actually have uh, somewhat of a deviated septum just going through the birthing canal. Hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. So the blood vessels, we're going inside your brain now. And we're going to look at that uh, network of blood vessels, the circle of Willis. Mm -hmm. Well, at least my septum is deviated. I've heard the surgery for that. It's extraordinarily painful. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll just pull up a couple other views of, of those blood vessels. We'll spin them around here. So you have... So, Lane, you're facing us now. That's your left mm -hmm. ear, yeah, your right, right ear, and you're looking at us. So your right internal carotid artery, big, uh, large, wide open vessel. There's no narrowing. There's no ballooning. And no sign of aneurysm. Left one, same thing, looks great. The left vertebral, right vertebral are normal. Basilar is normal, and there's your circle of Willis. Mm -hmm. so. It's interesting how much um, more um, like bold lanes are compared to mine. I guess it just comes back to like your brain size and your vessel size. Because <laughs> mine was a narrow compared to yours. Yours stand out a lot. Got that blood flow, girl. Yeah. So, yeah. 
and they with we can even isolate. Um, so this is the the right internal carotid artery, just mm, the right cool. one. Hmm. Um, yeah, those look like uh, no. Yeah, they look no they look great. So no aneurysms, no stenosis. Good um, to know. And now let's get to what everybody wants to know. What does Lane's prostate look like? Look <laughs> <laughs> at that big old ball. Uh, left hip. So we have left hip. Wow, what a bulge. Gluteus. Um, and this is going to be the anterior portion, posterior. So gluteus. this is your, like your extracellular. Uh, yeah, so, um, you know, this. Out of post tissue. Yeah, this is subcutaneous tissue here. You got me a fat ass. Uh-huh. You got a bit of ribli uh, marbling through your glutes here, babe. <laughs> <laughs> <A little> striations. <laughs> so we're going to see the bladder come in here. Bright white, fluid filled. Um, we're starting to see the spine here. Um, so uh, bladder, uh, our radiologist measured the size of the prostate. And we'll look at it from another viewpoint. Mm -hmm. This is the sagittal viewplane. We'll look at from an axial angle too. Mm -hmm. uh, this was just a little bit of uh, fluid uh, in the pelvis. There's nothing to speak of it. He just said a little bit of extra free fluid. So he just pointed yeah, it out. There's nothing that that might mean or anything like that? No. Um, if, if there was a lot of it, um, you know, it, there could be different disease states, but there's... What would, what would, it just doesn't have to go with that indicate I know it's uh, like a lot of it. Infection, um, malignancy, cancer, uh, okay. but this is a normal variant to have a small amount I of see. fluid. Okay. So we, you know, we have that term, uh, that term, normal anatomic yeah. variant, <laughs> yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it. it so if it was cancer, so we'd be looking at something a lot. We would see a tumor. We'd see a mass. We would okay. see. We don't see that. Okay. So, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, lumbar vertebrae. Yeah, I can see the vertebra. There's some some stuff going on in there. So, you know, but that's we knew that already. My L my L three L four and L four L five. Yeah. Are, so here's L four L five. So that's my the L4. disc where I had the bulge at, and you can see some narrowing there. Um, and oh, the L that yeah. was the disc where I had the the herniation. So yeah. But you can also see that there's no like fluid spilled outside the disc anymore. Mm -hmm. You know. But yeah, it's not it's not impinging on the spinal right. cord here. So that's why I'm asymptomatic right now. Yeah. All right. Let's look. Uh, the axial plane, left hip, right hip, bladder, abdomen, uh, buttocks down here, uh, colon. This is your uh, rectum. Sweet. So we'll get to the prostate. So this, he measured this, the size of your prostate. A normal prostate is 15 to 30 cc's in total volume. Mm -hmm. Yours is 22.6, normal. Okay. Um, right, so we look. There's two zones of the prostate. The peripheral zone is where we pay close attention to. Um, this is where 85% of prostate cancers arise. Mm. It will be a mm -hmm. black uh, ball or nodule. We don't see that. So prostate's clean, so we can move on. Good job, babe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go to the liver. So again, this is our uh, we're calculating uh, the overall fat and iron content in the liver. Um, so liver, aorta, spleen, stomach is here, rib cage, rib cage. So let's pull up. So you are actually 1.4% liver fat. That's okay. excellent. Normal is less than 4%. Um, I'm 2.1%, so you got me beat. <laughs> and then again... And this is who lays fatty McFatty right now. So, but that's good news, right? Because yeah, you're that's looking at You're looking at visceral liver fat is much more indicative of all kinds of CVD and... Right, your risk, risk for diabetes, cardiovascular disease. Uh, this is the, the biggest predictor from a body composition standpoint is visceral organ fat. Mm -hmm. And yours is very low. That's great. Excellent. So when you put that in context with, okay, hot blood glucose was a little bit high, LDL was a little bit high, this is one of those things to say, okay, well, those are important, but when we look at the overall picture, mm -hmm. probably just monitor it, not something to be, we're not going to say, hey, you need to get on statins or right. like, drastic lifestyle interventions, that sort of thing. Right. So, yeah, we need to, we need to look at all of, all of the information. Right. Yeah. Um, we also looked at, uh, R2 star is our 
is our nomenclature for iron content in the liver. Mm -hmm. Normal is less than 80, you are 41.9. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're normal. You do not have so no I was just going to say yeah, no so hemochromatosis for a year. Yeah, so uh, for example, no, 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 so um, when, I, when I went through my scanning and my genetics, I have a variant copy for the hemochromatosis gene which codes for uh, iron storage disorder. So my iron content in my liver is 119. Oh wow. Mine's elevated. Mm. So um, I will not develop the disease because I carry a good copy, but I have a bad copy which will. So if you, but like let's say you had kids and another person had the allele that had right. the bad copy, you could. So that's an autosomal it. recessive right. uh, gene. So potentially um, if my wife choice. and I were going to have kids and she had she was a carrier also that would put our children, our offspring, at 25% risk yep. to be homozygous for the disease. Still doing them punnet squares. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so does that mean, Carl, that you now uh, donate blood more regularly? So or? actually for me, I should watch the amount of iron I eat and yeah. it would be beneficial for me to donate blood yeah. a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. huh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's uh, keep moving here. Go back to the 17th century and just do bloodletting. Mm. Yeah, bring the leeches on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is a, a Look at quick, those abs. A quick uh, mm. uh, run through a coronal series. So this is the abdominal wall, and we're going to be scanning towards the back. So it's if you're standing uh, Look facing. How big us. my middle ab abs are <laughs> mm. compared to the, the top and bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are some of the ribs here, yeah. the sternum here, the liver starting to come in. You see the diaphragm, mm -hmm. right lung, the heart, left lung, gallbladder. Okay. Your gallbladder is normal, uh, liver is normal, uh, transverse colon. Let's see what you had for breakfast, Lane. Yeah, so there's, uh, <laughs> there's some fluid in. Uh, uh, you didn't have breakfast actually at the time of your scanning. Right, you just yeah, had you some were, water. Yeah, you were empty. <laughs> so we don't see that omelet in there. <laughs> <laughs> no eggs. Yeah, uh, spleen over here. Uh -huh. uh, right kidney, left kidney, and then this viewpoint we can really see the uh, the spine as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So Pretty if you had straight. scoliosis, it would be S shaped. Pretty straight. You know, one of the greatest pilots of all time had drastic scoliosis. His spine looked like an S. Really? But when he would deadlift, it would compress so much that his lockout was almost below his knees because his oh. spine would literally compress as he deadlifted. Wow. wow. All right, let's, let's go to your hippocampus, Lane. Mm. Wait. Looks like you're normal. Yeah, so you're normal. Um, let's zoom in a little. Um, hippocampal occupancy score, 83%. Uh, so you are normal for your age. Uh, that's exactly where we want you to be. And then we look at the overall, camp, overall size of the hippocampus, mm -hmm. uh, the volume 90th, 90th percentile. So you're right where you should be. Sweet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom out for a second. So this is just a you know, um, the imaging we should have yeah, yeah. Uh, coronal view, and this is the hippocampus in red. Again, coronal view, hippocampus in red. Uh, axial view, hippocampus, and then the sagittal view. You you can't really see it. We can we can pull up the sagittal. You must need quite a bit of training on the software and that sort of thing to... So, yeah, full disclosure, I'm not a radiologist. Right. I'm internal medicine. Um, but, but you're looking at what the radiologists have said. Yeah, so I have I have the reports, and I go through this with each client, so um, I don't want to say it's on-the-job training, uh, but the more you go through these, you become much more yeah. proficient. You know, like you guys with I'm assuming clients, right? you'd be pretty proficient at looking at MRI and being <laughs> able to see what's on there. Yeah, so... Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. So. Can we look at Lane's heart? Have we got heart scans? We do. Um, so let's uh, let's finish with the MRI here. Yep. Uh, cool. 73. So, so we're supposed to find out if I actually have a heart. <laughs> I think I was the one that was questionable. 
<laughs> no doubt you have a heart. <laughs> we're gonna do. Oh, thanks, babe. We're gonna do a quick a drive through the head to toe scan, uh -huh. uh, axial view. So the top of your skull, mm -hmm. your face would, is gonna be up here, and your back is gonna be towards the bottom of the screen. That's so cool. Eyeballs. So the radiologist pointed out your sinuses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you, um, we have a reason for why you struggle yeah. so much. I can stop giving you shit about that, taking so that's every day. that's probably not sleep apnea then, right? Because that's, uh, no, sleep apnea is more like also with heart Starting and breathing. stopping. Sleep apnea. Would yeah, be, I don't stop breathing. I just have yeah. a hard time breathing. Yeah. Right shoulder, left mm -hmm. shoulder. Um, we're, we're looking, this is your trachea, your windpipe. Mm -hmm. Left. So the, Yep, go ahead. Sorry, just to go back on the science. So it's probably not something where I need like a breathing machine or something. I just need to address the no, science issue. No, I think, yeah. You the just inflammation. Have a, a, a lot of inflammation built up there. So we're going down uh, left lung, right lung, mm -hmm. sternum. I think Look so. at these pectorals. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of chest mass there, Lynn. Not a ton of body fat either. No. A very thin rim of, of skin and, you know, not hardly any body fat to speak of, so. So this is, um, this is not a specific cardiac MRI. There are protocols for that. Um, but with this, uh, we did catch, um, so this is your left ventricle, mm -hmm. strong muscular wall. This is your main pump that pumps blood out mm -hmm. through your aorta. This is your aorta down here, mm -hmm. um, right ventricle. And so we're looking for fluid. This is the pericardium around the heart. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no signs of fluid. Your heart structure is normal. Your heart is normal in size. A normal heart takes up about two thirds of the uh, thorax or the uh, uh, the uh, chest cavity. Mm -hmm. So yours is normal. Mm -hmm. uh, going down, liver here, stomach. There's water in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Spleen over here. I think he measures. Yeah, he measures the size of your spleen. That's normal. We're going to see the gallbladder come in over here. There it is. So, uh, yeah, gallbladder, right kidney, left kidney. So your your pancreas, kidneys, adrenal glands, um, all were normal. No nodules, no masses. I don't have adrenal fatigue. Oh, thank God. Well, we can't tell that. <laughs> <on MRI. laughs> so but for, uh, we talk about gallbladder. So gallbladder is a place. Uh, some people get gallbladder disease, or um, they have inflammation. Sludge of the gallbladder. or stones. Yeah. yeah so gallbladder uh, is where you store bile. So bile is produced by the liver, and it's the gallbladder is part of the biliary tract. So you store uh, bile, which helps to break down fats. So people who have um, inflammation of the gallbladder, they need their gallbladder taken out, they usually have to eat a very low-fat diet mm. because they can't make bile fast enough to digest the fats, and they have a lot of GI pain if they don't, um, if they don't eat a low-fat diet. But obviously that's not an issue with, with me or Holly. Mm -hmm. All right, last series on the MRI. This is the special diffusion weighted uh, imaging. So um, uh, certain cancers, uh, nodules, tumors, and lymph nodes uh, that could potentially be malignant will light up. They will be a bright yellow or a bright white. Um, uh, certain organs, uh, kidneys, spleen, uh, will, uh, will light up on this uh, diffusion weighted imaging as will the spinal cord. Uh, so let's take a look. And then we're starting top down, so this is going to be the top of the skull. And the face is going to be up here. You see brain tissue lighting up. And that is normal. If we saw a tumor, it would be uh, like a bright uh, white yellow uh, round area. Ooh. We do not see that. So, uh, these good. ventricles, cerebral spinal fluid in there. So the eyes. That's crazy. I always like that view. <laughs> <That's so tricky. laughs> Look at the eye holes. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Autumn had a fly on his eyeball. <laughs> on his goddamn eyeball. So the coronary arteries light up too. Mm -hmm. um, the spinal cord. Going down. And we're going towards the neck. Um, you know. There's no signs of thyroid nodules or masses up here. What's the spot just to the right of your mouse, or is that just a... I think that's a blood vessel, most likely. Okay. 
Diabetes. <laughs> so the left lung, right lung, sternum here. Heart. So the liver is here. Okay. Oh. Spleen down here, stomach. So your your scan was clean. Yay. Kidneys. Gallbladder. And let's go down uh, just to the prostate. You love that prostate, don't you? Well, for men, we really focus on uh, you know the male uh, pelvis and reproductive organs. Mm -hmm. I mean, would this show something like testicular cancer? Would that show up on a scan like this? Yeah, you could you could see that. Mm. So, yeah, okay, good. So the other thing we can see is, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm used to seeing normal sized clients. Mm -hmm. You have a large amount of muscle mass in your legs and your glutes. Told you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, they did a uh, MRI of Ray Williams, who's the top super heavyweight powerlifter mm -hmm. in the world. 138 kilos of lean body mass. 306 pounds wow. or something like that. Wow. Let's um, let's go to the final report. Um, so if you are 35 years and older, mm -hmm. we do a coronary CT score. Okay. That will look at plaque burden that's built up around the main arteries of the heart. Okay, this will be interesting. So we didn't do this for Holly, right? So we did not. Uh, you have to be 35 years or older okay. uh, uh, for us to get significant results on it. So um, what, uh, what we're going to be looking for... So the radiologists, they, they run it through um, an algorithm, and we get a, uh, do you have your, oh, here it is. Here's yours. Um, do I score your report. You get a total score, and then they break it down by blood vessel. That's cool. So. Be interesting, because um, there is heart disease that runs in my family. Yeah, you actually do have a small amount of calcium. Oh, really? Very small amount. On the left anterior descending coronary artery, all of it. Yeah, so your total calcium score is three. So by itself, that is very small, putting mm -hmm. you at low risk overall mm -hmm. uh, for a coronary event. Um, but we age match it as well. Mm -hmm. So somebody 37 years old, we look at all those people. So you're in the 70th per 75th percentile amongst okay. peers your age. So 70th percent. 70 as good or as bad? Uh, the, higher, the higher is bad. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I'm a little bit high then. Yeah. As risk factor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So normal for uh, your age, my age would be 50th percentile. Okay. Right? Yep. If you, if your score was zero, you would be in the, you know, zero or one, you know, zero yep. percentile. Um, but so overall, it's probably score, also bad that it's on one artery too, as opposed to being yeah. spread out. Right. So. So exactly, let's pull up the images. So we, I'll actually show you where it is. Okay. okay. So um, we're gonna be looking, um, again, so this is your sternum. Mm -hmm. These are your pecs. Um, this is your spine here. Uh, white is ribs. So this is a coronary CT. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to be looking down, we're cutting slices through the heart. So we see your left main. Mm -hmm. um, this is also known as the widow maker. Mm -hmm. if, if somebody in their 50s has a massive heart attack, it's usually the, the left main, mm -hmm. and they usually do not survive that. So right. off of this left main, you will yeah, see... Isn't it something like the younger somebody has a heart attack, the more less likely they are to survive? The it. more lethal, yeah. 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 So we are going to be looking here. The left anterior descending is going to break off. So normally this is just all gray, all gray, but white bone calcium lights up. Mm. So we see, oh, yeah. that's it right there. That's what we see. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Okay. That's all we see. Just that one little spot. Yeah, maybe a tiny But still precursor. Not, not something you want to see. So it's it's not, you're right. It, it shouldn't be there. Um, it's, overall, your, your risk is very low for a coronary event in mm -hmm. 10 years, but. 
Cons when you consider the context of everything we've looked at, yeah. But yeah. obviously, like, I'm glad I know this now because now I can. Yeah. Um, so, what would be the recommendations you guys would make? For so, like for somebody who has a, a high calcium score and they're at high risk, we would recommend statin therapy. Mm. So, you know, for you, your LDL is 113, your total overall risk is low. Mm -hmm. So, I would say most physicians would not recommend statin therapy. Mm. Because there's, there's some would, side effects with statins. Right, right. There, nothing is benign. None of these yeah. medications are benign. So, perhaps one we have your genetic uh, information as well. Mm -hmm. So we would be looking at that in conjunction with. Yeah. This. So we'll look at specific genes. Well, this is what I was more concerned about this because this runs on my so my um, my mother's father, mm -hmm. Pepo, he had several coronary events during his lifetime, uh, and he survived them thankfully. Um, but yeah, he had his first heart attack when he was 52 years old. So, um, yeah, I mean, this would be something where like over the last few years, me and Holly talked about this, like I got a little bit lazy with my fiber intake, mm -hmm. like hadn't been consuming as much just because my life had been so stressful and I just didn't feel like cooking and those sorts of things. So yeah. I think, you know, uh, obviously we didn't, we don't have data from, this could have been there 10 years ago. Right. You know, we don't know. Probably that. not, but we don't know. it could have been there 10 years ago. We don't know when it started. Mm -hmm. But um, I think if I bring some more fiber back in, that can bring, bring down the LDL score a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe lower my overall risk. But I'm already doing some of the other things that they recommend, which is like I walk and I exercise. Right, Life, lifestyle risk factors, you know, you hit the nail on the head, nutrition, exercise, exactly. To so mitigate, is there the anything risk. that you can do to reduce this calcium score? Like is no, that, so is that once, that's once there. Once the calcium is there, it's, it's, it's going to be there. Okay. Um, but it may, be, it may be beneficial to watch this moving forward, mm. you know. Uh, whether it's annual or you know every two or every five years have a coronary CT mm -hmm. so we can follow it. Okay. Yeah. So I think that kind of wraps up today's um, kind of summary. We've got to come back in a few weeks time now, Carl, to go over a few other things you want to talk about what we'll be doing next time. Yeah, so um, we are going to run all of your laboratory data, your family history, mm -hmm. uh, your MRI scans. Uh, we had over 12,000 images on each of you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Lane, we, we will incorporate your coronary CT mm -hmm. and your full genomics report, your pharmacogenomics, and we will get a full integrated risk and we will be able to plot out your risk of uh, dementias, cardiovascular disease, uh, coronary disease, AFib, stroke, uh, cancers, and we'll look at some other fun stuff too. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. Well, um, you guys uh, will have obviously a video on that when that time comes up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask us in the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave a link for your guys' uh, clinic yeah. in the. If in you're the... wanting to get something like this done, uh, we can kind of provide some locations that are available that might be close to you. Um, yeah. We'll obviously have this clinic's uh, information if you're coming by this way and you want to have your, you know, all of this information done for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's phenomenal. It's yeah. great. And uh, Carl, so how much does something like this cost right now? So uh, right now uh, our introductory price is $5,500 uh, to go through uh, this comprehensive workup that you guys just went through and to get all of the analysis on the back end. Um, now, do we get special treatment or does every client get to like, sit down with you? And, like, no, so every, I, I sit down with every client and go through all of their MRIs, all of their CAT scans, their blood work. Uh, their full genomics report. Um, this is a real personalized touch. So where we're heading right now in, in healthcare is towards personalized medicine based mm -hmm. on your genetics, mm -hmm. based on your phenotype, the way we express our genetics. Um, so we can uh, you know, keep people happy and healthy and avoid some of these chronic diseases. Mm -hmm. And one more quick question. I know there's people out there that are gonna say, wow, that's really expensive, which it is, but how does this compare to something like the kits you can order online that are um, only a hundred dollars? So you know, um, a good barometer of where we're at right now is um, Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, uh, Cooper Clinic. They typically charge ten thousand dollars for an executive physical, and that includes no genetics, no full body MRI. Uh, that's typically basic blood work. Uh, you'll sit down with a cardiologist. They'll do an echocardiogram, maybe put you through a stress test, um, but it's not comprehensive. It's not. There's no, there's no artificial intelligence algorithm to interpret all this data. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, uh, 
you know, on all accounts, the most comprehensive the evaluation you can get done and right you now. And you said that this, this, the amount of data that's produced by this, like you said, like 1,200 scans, so it's, that, you know, it's no, a, no single doctor could, could ever We can't, this. yeah, there's no physician that, can, that could interpret all these results, so you need to use an AI. And that's where medicine is heading. Uh, we are no longer going to be a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a culture, or I guess a healthcare system uh, based on physician integration. It's going to be uh, AI and deep learning uh, that is going to integrate all of this, and the physician will simply uh, enact your game plan for you. So this, you guys are kind of the tip of the spear in terms of where medicine is heading. So we are on the bleeding edge right now. So yeah. we started our research study about three and a half years ago in San Diego. And um, we've uh, published one study. We're getting ready to submit our second study to Nature mm -hmm. uh, to hopefully wow. get published there. So uh, we will see what where we and go. And you, you said, on average, you're you're finding that you're basically your data suggests that you're able to extend the people who go through this. You extend their lifespan by one to nine years, something like yeah, that. Yeah, if we right? extrapolate the data, so looking at healthy uh, patients who come through here, a median age of 53 years old. Uh, two percent of them are we are finding new cancers that they did not know about two percent of them either a brain or aortic aneurysm that they did not know about and if one of those ruptures it's typically catastrophic you're in the emergency room it's game over so uh, if we extrapolate the data uh, based on the, the cardiovascular findings the dementia findings uh, the tumor findings um, we we're looking at probably adding one to nine years of life Onto the average person. And so, not only that, thinking about the burden on the healthcare system as well. Like, yeah. um, if we can start to move away from that, you know, treating um, system to a preventative approach, like this is really the direction that the medical field kind of need to head. Yeah. If it means, um, <laughs> you know, reducing the overall cost of healthcare. Instead of treating something after it happens, yeah, well, if we find it happens. early or we know what's going to happen yeah. and treat it before it actually yeah, happens. Yeah, right now we. We are the best in the world at treating sick patients. Episodic and reactive is where we are currently at as a healthcare system, and our, our expenditures have never been higher. We only spend 2% of healthcare dollars on prevention. Yeah, so, and, and obviously, people who are watching this, some people may not be able to afford $5,500, uh, but the good news is, is the price um, over time has come down. Like, it five has. years ago, if you wanted to get this done, it was what, $20,000, when, when we first started three and a half years ago, it was $25,000, but with how fast technology is growing, uh, cost of MRI scanning has come down a little bit too, uh, but with, uh, with where technology is heading, um, Hopefully, we can get the price down further so we can further democratize this for everybody. Yeah, and, and so two things I, I want to bring up is one, the initial, the genetic stuff is only stuff you have to run one time, and that's a, a bulk of the cost, right? Yeah. So, uh, and that's updated yearly, right? So, as more data is added so to the genome. So, we, um, part of our research study is we're, we're looking to actually prove that this screening should be done annually because mm. the tumor could pop up in 12 months' time. Your genetics aren't going to change, but what does change is the research. Right. Uh, you know, every day there's thousands of studies being published worldwide. Not all of them are genetics, uh, but the ones that are are pretty significant. And so we can we are continually adding to our genetic database, and so we can re-annotate your DNA, mm -hmm. run it through our AI again, and we can change your risk factors based on your blood, your MRI, and where the studies. Uh, so right now, what is that. you recommend is the initial scan plus genetics blood work. But then for, for follow-up, it's just blood work and scan. So, yeah, so, so follow-up, um, it's we do a blood panel to look CBC, CMP, lipids, you know, uh, A1C, a thyroid, um, and then we'll do your MRI scan again. It's typically about half the cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. so. So, and so the one thing I would say is obviously not everybody's able to afford this, um, but if you can afford it, think about what you might save yourself in the future. Even if you have health insurance, one, this is your life we're talking about. And two, you may say, well, I have health insurance that covers 100%, but you're not also accounting for the stress on your life, the time you'll have to take out of, of work to get treatment, and the co-pays, and you know, just the overall your, how much your quality of life will suffer if you need to get treatment for something when it's already progressed pretty far along. So I would say, like, for people who can't afford this, it's, I mean, it should be one of a, a top priority. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple, um, uh, you know, negative detractors. People will say, well, I don't want to know what's going on. I say that's bull crap. Do you think Alex Trebek would have wanted to know a year ago he had stage one pancreatic cancer? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, right now, most cancers at stage one or stage two are extremely treatable. Mm -hmm. um, it's when they get to... Cancer that kills people now is, from what I understand of the data, it's usually stage three or stage four once it's metastasized. When it's local, it's still pretty treatable. Right. So, yeah. uh, but once it gets systematic, then it's tough. Yeah. If, it's, it's tough. if it's spread to the lymph nodes, the bloodstream, who knows where it's been. Yeah. So, so I mean, again, uh, the way I look at it is... This is, it's not like, okay, nothing was wrong and now you've got the scans and you see this and now something's wrong. No, was that was already there. Mm -hmm. The question is, do you want to know about it and be able to treat it or do you want to hide your head in the yeah. sand? And or if, or let's say, look at the other thing. If, if your dementia risk is high, wouldn't you want to do everything in your life to, help to, to change yeah. your risk yeah. or minimize it? So Absolutely. 33%. And some of your, it's like family planning as well, something yeah. really interesting. Young, yeah, young people as well, family planning. Yeah, yeah what if you carried some kind of terrible gene that you would be likely to pass on to your children yeah and then you have then at yeah, least you well, can make an informed decision about whether or not you want to have kids or adopt or something like mm -hmm. that carl is the example of he and his wife um so you have the pku um, yeah phenylketonuria i have a bad copy of the pku gene mm -hmm. it's autosomal recessive so i'm not affected by it but if my wife and i were going to have children we would want to have her tested. Yeah. Because if she carried a bad copy, then 25% chance that our child would have. Well, real quick, PKU is something tested for at birth. It affects mm -hmm. about one in every 10,000 babies. Mm -hmm. And basically, you cannot metabolize phenylalanine. Yeah. And phenylalanine, anytime you eat any source of protein, people think it's just diet soda or something. Diet soda actually has very low amounts of, of phenylalanine. Protein. Eat a steak, you know. Um, it builds up in the bloodstream and is actually um, um, okay. neurotoxic yeah. at high doses. So. Yeah. Um, you know, normal people don't have this problem because they metabolize it to tyrosine just fine. But again, this is one of those things that if you have this, it can be deadly. And you have to be on a very restrictive diet your entire life. Mm -hmm. You can, you have to be on a phenylalanine devoid or very low amount diet for your entire life. It's really restrictive. Yeah. So, yeah. well guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed and you learned a lot. I know we learned a ton mm -hmm. about ourselves and how treatment is working. And if you want to check out uh, these so you can, clinics? yeah, you can go to longevitybioimaging.com. Awesome. So we'll put that link in the description and uh, hopefully we'll have some more information as well. And where else do you have um, places to do this instead? So we're in Naples, Florida. Yeah, Naples, Florida. So we are the first partner for Health Nucleus where this all started. Health Nucleus is in La Jolla, California. Um, so right now we've got uh, La Jolla, California. And Naples here and later this year uh, there will be uh, other partners opening up in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Awesome. So uh, yeah we'll put the information in the description. Thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time.